Hey hockey fans, welcome back! I'm Josh, this is the Hockey Flow, and today is Saturday, May 21st, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me on this lovely Saturday. You know what that means too, special video day, that's right. Uh, we got the Calder Trophy winner coming up, and I figure what better time than to look at 10 obscure facts that you may or may not know about the Calder Trophy. Uh, I tell you what, I'm really excited about this one for you guys. I learned a lot doing research for it, things that I thought I knew, and, and little did I know, I, I didn't. Um, so learned a lot of the new things and I'm really excited to share those with you guys um, but if you do enjoy the content you know please uh, take take a moment go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now uh, it really does help us out a lot and we are gonna keep bringing you videos so we want to make sure you don't miss any of those and if you do enjoy the content you know don't feel uh, don't feel scared to smash that like button because it also helps the channel out a ton uh, we are gonna be doing giveaways periodically we got one going on right now we're working our way to 100 subscribers so as we get closer closer to that I'll, I'll give you some more details and we do have a few more details at the end of the video for you as well so make sure to stick around for that but without further ado let's get into the top 10 facts that we may or may not have known of the Calder Trophy. Number one, Wayne Gretzky never won it? Oh man, okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys do know this one, that Wayne Gretzky never actually won the Calder, but it's still a really fun fact, and, and something, definitely a conversation starter, and I tell you what, he, he definitely would have won it if he was eligible. So, the 1979-1980 season was Wayne Gretzky's first year in the NHL, and he led the league, or excuse me, he led rookies with 137 points. Uh, just absolutely amazing, right, as a rookie to make that impact, but unfortunately, he, he was not eligible. The World Hockey Association was still alive at that time, and he did play uh, the previous season in that league, and, and by the rules for the, the Calder, he was not eligible for it in the 79-80 season. But I tell you what, um, by anyone's account, he was most certainly the Rookie of the Year for the 79-80 season. Absolutely. All right, moving on to number two. The Toronto Maple Leafs have won the most Calder trophies, and this shouldn't be that surprising, I suppose. It had to be probably someone like the Red Wings or, or Maple Leafs, one of the original five, but um, they've won it nine times, and I think probably the neatest part is is the time period, right? Like, we see their first winner, Sill Alps, in uh, 1936, 1937, and then we see their most recent one with Austin Matthews in 2016, 2017. Tell you what, maybe Michael Bunting changes that, right? This year, uh, we'll, we'll see Maple Leaf fans um, you know definitely check out my uh, Calder Trophy uh, finalists and winner video I'll link that in the description to this one um, but we went through all three finalists and, and went through Michael Bunting in detail and tell you why tell you what he's he's got a good as, as good a case as anyone so um, but if he doesn't win that means Austin Matthews was their last winner and that was in 2016 2017 so we're looking at an 80 year stretch that the Maple Leafs have had winners of the Calder Trophy so definitely impressive there Maple beliefs you should uh, hang your hats for that one that's that's beautiful uh, moving on to number three shall we all right, the oldest winner was 31 years old 31 years old I know what you're saying Josh how can the rookie of the year be 31 years old well I tell you what it was a different time um, for one uh, this actually prompted a rule change. Sergei Makarov um, actually won the award, won the Calder Trophy at 31 years old. Um, this was, like I said, it was a different time, so he, he did spend the majority of his career playing over in Russia, um, and during the Cold War, you know, Russian players were not necessarily, it wasn't encouraged to come over to the U.S., and, and the United States didn't look as, as kindly towards um, that part of the world anyway. So um, he did uh, wait till his 31-year um season to, to come over to the America and come over to the NHL um, and he did put up a very good season that uh, that was was an excellent season for Makarov but it did prompt a rule change so now you do have to be 26 years or, or younger to win the award uh, I know that's kind of a hot topic with Michael Bunting who we just talked about um, him being 26 but hey he's following the rules he is eligible and, and he's got a good case so he's not 31 years old so I think folks should uh, should relax a little bit I, I get it you know he's a little older but still, he definitely wasn't 31. All right, moving on to number four, shall we? Okay, the youngest winners, we're going on the opposite end of the spectrum. They were just 18 years old, and we do have four of those throughout history. We had the, the great Bobby Orr, we had the late Dale Howardchuck, and we had Tom Barrasso, and last but not least, we had the wonderful Nathan McKinnon. You see my face cutting him off a little bit there. Sorry, sir, but um, all four excellent players. Um, 
Hall of Famers, maybe? I don't know. Tom Barrasso, I'm not as familiar with, but um, Sabres fans, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and, and are you surprised that we have four 18-year-olds? Now, there, there were others that I think it was technically their 19-year-old season, but they were probably 18 for part of it. But these were the four that won it. They're our youngest winners of the Calder Trophy. Just incredible, I tell you what. All right, moving on to number five. Two non-goalies have won it with only 19 points. So the reason why we highlight this is because this was the lowest point total for a uh, position outside of goaltender. And I tell you what, uh, I was I was really shocked. Um, this was actually part of the motivation for the video, to, to be quite honest. Um, Barrett Jackman, you, you see there that third bullet point, the defenseman for the Blues, 2002-2003, he won the Calder Trophy with only three goals. And I tell you what... Um, just just a kind of an odd season, right? I mean, between the mix of uh, the cla the rookie class and um, Jackman, you know, he had, he had a solid season. It's not that he didn't necessarily deserve it, um, but when you look at all the Calder winners, uh, trophy winner seasons on paper, these two stand out, but Barrett Jackman more so than Cully. Cully Dahlstrom in the 1937-1938 season um, also put up 19 points as a centerman. Um, the, the game was different, right? An entirely different game. So that's why it was so interesting to see Barrett Jackman because you didn't see a point total that low until you know, we're looking at 2002, 2003. There was such a big gap um, within the record. So uh, this one stood out to me. You know, let me know in the comments if you were surprised by that or uh, maybe we got some big, big Barrett Jackman fans out there. Um, but yeah, let me know. Um, maybe some Coley Dahlstrom fans too. But um, I found that one really interesting. Only 19 points in your won Rookie of the Year uh, in 2002-2003, so um, incredible, absolutely. All right, moving on, on, moving on in the list. Number six, Ed Belfour, the great goalie, only uh, he won it two seasons after his initial appearance. So this is another fun, uh, fun little caveat to the game of hockey. Um, he actually did play 23 games in the 88-89 season for the Blackhawks. Um, then he uh, spent the 89-90 season uh, with Team Canada. He actually didn't play with his NHL team. Um, but then at the end of the season, he did make six appearances in the playoffs. Went four and two, I believe, at 2.41 goals against. Um, actually played better than the two goalies for the Blackhawks. So um, they probably should have had him up the full season. I'm sure there's a lot more to it. I mean, goodness, this is... Um around when I was born, for, for goodness sake. So, uh, But Ed Belfort did win it um, two full seasons after his uh, initial appearance in the NHL. And that season that he did win it, he led the league in wins, save percentage, and goals against average. Um, he was the only he was the last goalie to do that uh, until Carey Price did it in 2014. So, man, good for you, Ed Belfort. But moving on to number seven. Plus 52 is the highest plus minus for a Calder winner, and this is coming to us from the great Ray Bork. And I tell you what, uh, it's just a coincidence that we popped this one at number seven, but yeah, he was number seven, 77 Avs fans as well. But uh, I tell you what, uh, the great Ray Bork is is just one of the one of the greats of all time, Hall of Famer, um, but his 79-80 season, he was only 19 years old, and he put up 65 points. I tell you what, that's incredible. Not, not our highest point total, we're going to see that in just a moment, um, but a plus 52, that is just impeccable, and I know we have some uh, plus minus haters out there, and that's okay, right, to each your own, um, but I, I do I do take a little merit in the plus minus, it's it's something, it stands out, you know, especially when you're sorting stats, um, that does mean something, and, and Ray Bork, you can ask any Bruins fans, and Bruins fans, you know what, maybe I'm wrong, but you tell me in the comments, um, Ray Bork is one of the greatest of all time, and, and he had an impact, and that plus minus just speaks to it, he had an impact from, from day one, so... Uh, uh, good for you, Bruins fans. You, you have a good one. Uh, man, remember, remembering Ray Bork lift the cup for the Avs is still one of my best hockey memories. But moving on to number eight, shall we? Okay, only five winners have surpassed 100 points. So I'm not going to give you Timo Solani's yet. Spoiler alert, he, he is the highest. But uh, Peter Stasny had 109, Alexander Ovechkin had 106, Dale Howarchuk 103, and the great Mario Lemieux rounded out the list with an even 100. Uh, that's just incredible. In the entire history of the NHL, we have five players 
five players to score over 100 points in their rookie season. Now, of course, Wayne Gretzky would also be be on this list um, if, if he would have been technically a rookie that season and eligible. Um, of course, he would have won it. That list would be up to six, but unfortunately, that is the one that, that got away, and uh, Gretzky even mentions that that's the one that it gets him, that he, he didn't win that one and, and couldn't win that one. Uh, so very interesting to see. But all right, moving on to number nine. 132 points is the most by a Calder winner. Timu Solani in 1992-93 with this iconic celebration. My goodness, he had quite the season. You could do a video alone just on this season. 132 points from a rookie, including 76 goals. 76 goals, and you cement yourself in hockey history with this celebration. My goodness, that's that's it. You know, Timu Solani, um, for me, more of a, a Ducks player. I, I Growing up, that's what I remember him as, but um, he'll, he'll always be a Jet in, in that celebration there. And Jets fans, um, you guys should always take pride in knowing that, that Timu was wearing your jersey. But, uh, man, number nine, Timu Solani. What a season, 92, 93, 76 goals. I'll be curious if anyone even gets close to that one. All right, uh, number 10. This one's a little fun. Panthers fans, this one just stood out when I was looking at the list of all the winners. Aaron Ekblad had more points than Jonathan Huberdeau. Now, for those not familiar, which is kind of, if you're watching this channel, you're familiar with the players, but Ekblad's a defenseman, Jonathan Huberdeau's a forward. So just on that basis alone, it seemed a little silly, but uh, yeah, Justin Huberdeau put up 31 points in 2012-2013, and Aaron Ekblad put up 39 points in 2014-2015, and I know there's a lot that goes into that. Um, if we look at their stats, you know, maybe they're not playing the same amount of games. Um, there's there's a lot goes into it, but at the end of the day, they both won the Calder Trophy, so that means they both were playing a lot. That means they both had impacts on their teams, and at the end of the day, Aaron Ekblad had more points than Justin Huberdeau, and I'll tell you what, Panthers fans right now, I bet you just wish you could get both those guys firing on all cylinders and scoring any types of points for you, but uh, I, I digress. You know, fingers crossed, maybe we can pull out a win in this series against the Lightning, but um, overall, you know, um, Panthers fans, you should be happy. You had two winners in three years, and now you're building uh, on that, and, and you've got an excellent team. Just because it hasn't happened in the playoffs yet doesn't mean it won't, right? So keep building on, on these excellent pieces. Maybe we get another Calder winner in the future. I know Anton Lundell had a, had a really good season this year. But um, that's going to do it for our, our top 10 facts that you may or may not have known about the Calder Trophy. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Um, we do have a giveaway going on on the channel right now. We, we just started it as we uh, just started the channel. But um, we are going to be uh, giving away something hockey-related. Wink, wink. Um, haven't decided exactly what but it's going to be really cool so um, definitely appreciate you guys appreciate all the support you guys are giving to the channel uh, it's going to be at when we hit the 100 subscriber mark on YouTube um, we'll, we'll do something uh, we'll, we'll give more details as we get closer if you need to like and stuff like that but uh, most likely it's just going to be hey subscribe to the channel um, um, we'll get into more of it, though, as we get closer. Again, we're, we're just in, in the infancy of the channel. Again, I appreciate you guys tuning in each day. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything uh, you guys want me to cover. Um, but, yeah, uh, I do appreciate it. Um, smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the content because I'm going to be bringing you videos all the time. If you do want to just talk hockey, you can find me over on uh, Twitter, at the Hockey Flow 22 uh, But until next time, cheers.